Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and in today's video, I'm not just going to show you how to open a bottle of champagne, but I'm going to show you how to saber a bottle of champagne. Now, black tie events are my favorite. And not only do I get to don my beautiful tuxedo, my Charvet shirt, put on a nice pair of cufflinks, my opera pumps, silk socks, dressed to the nines, but uh, a black tie event is an occasion for celebration. And with that comes the other accoutrement uh, that I look forward to just as much as dressing up. Now on a proper or appropriate occasion, of course, that means champagne. And if you're really lucky, caviar. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the accoutrement, if you will, uh, show you how to properly open a bottle of champagne, uh, discuss a little bit uh, some Petrosin caviar and why I think that complements champagne so well, uh, and have a little bit of fun opening the champagne, uh, not just as one would do normally, but if you are really celebrating how to open a bottle of champagne with a champagne saber. So I've got a few essentials over here to my right. Of course, if you're drinking champagne, champagne as a white wine uh, needs to be a properly chilled. The best way to chill champagne, of course, is in an ice bucket. I have a beautiful Fabergé ice bucket here uh, and a bottle of Maya champagne. Uh, now the Maya champagne is a great bottle. Uh, it's a grand cru and for $50, it's really hard to beat. Uh, but if it is a truly special occasion, uh, that in my opinion, calls or warrants a special champagne. Uh, here is another one of my favorite champagnes I just wanted to share with you. Uh, this is a rare champagne, that's the brand name. This is uh, the 2008 Vintage. Uh, now this champagne, of course, uh, really takes it to the next level. Um, I think out of the last 40 years, uh, rare champagne has only declared 12 vintages. Now what that means is that the conditions were right, they were perfect, so much that they wanted to stamp the year on that year's champagne, creating a, a vintage champagne. And so again, out of the last 40 years, Rare has only declared 12 vintages, uh, 2008 uh, being one of the more recent ones that you can still find in stores. Uh, this is about a $200, $250 bottle of champagne. And on a vintage champagne, you're gonna get more complex notes, more crispness, more nuance. Uh, and that's one of the things that I love about a great vintage champagne. Now we're not gonna be savoring uh, this bottle. I'm gonna be saving it uh, for a special occasion a little bit later, uh, but I wanted to show you uh, one of my favorite vintage champagnes. Of course, there's many other great champagne brands out there, Dom Perignon, uh, Krug, uh, Moet, uh, Veuve Cloque Clo, many great ones, but this rare champagne has been one that I've particularly enjoyed and would call one of my favorites. Now, when it comes to drinking champagne, you've got two options, of course. One being the more traditional champagne flute uh, for a non-vintage or a um, you know relatively young vintage champagne like this 2008, uh, this would be completely appropriate. Uh, but if you've got an older champagne, um, I would recommend uh, using an actual wine glass. So this. Uh, is uh, one of the Riedel hand-blown glasses. Uh, you can see it's a large glass, and this is going to allow that champagne or the wine uh, to really open up and those nuanced flavors show through. So if you have anything that is older than 10 or 15 years, I would encourage you to try to drink it uh, out of a normal glass, uh, see how that works for you. I have to say, it's really profound just the difference in how the wine hits your palate uh, between the different glass types uh, and they have a profound impact on how you actually taste and experience a wine, or in this case, champagne. So the next time you're drinking a bottle of champagne, I'd highly encourage you to have a little bit of an experiment, pull out a white wine glass and a champagne glass, and pour the same champagne into each, try them, and just see how differently they can taste. And then of course, the caviar, uh, Petrosin caviar, synonymous with the finest caviar in the world. Alexander Petrosin is actually a good close friend of mine and he lent me uh, his uh, champagne saber uh, for today's video. 
but whenever it comes to caviar, I have to say I've really uh, grown uh, a profound appreciation for caviar uh, by virtue of what I've learned from Alex. Uh, and one of the biggest myths of caviar is that it has to be expensive, uh, and that's just simply not the case. Now, of course, uh, caviar isn't inexpensive, uh, but uh, it is probably not as much as you think it would otherwise cost. Uh, visit, of course, Petrosin's website, and you can see that they've got several grades of caviar. Uh, depending on the grade, uh, that, of course, determines the price. Uh, but even the least expensive uh, tin of caviar from Petrosin uh, is going to be an absolute home run at any party. Uh, and it's one of my favorite gifts to give because, of course, whoever thinks uh, to buy uh, caviar for oneself, you just don't see that very often. Uh, so caviar uh, is uh, one of my favorite gifts to give. And of course, uh, if you're at a black tie event or hosting an important celebration at home, you know, one uh, that warrants champagne, adding caviar just takes that occasion to the next level by making it all the more special. So this is just a small primer on what I think are the important accoutrements uh, of a special occasion, a black tie occasion. Uh, and so take that uh, for what it's worth. Let me know your thoughts and opinions uh, in the comments below. Uh, but I think without further ado, let's get in to actually opening some champagne. So of course there is the proper way to open a bottle of champagne, which I'm about to demonstrate. Uh, and then there is champagne sabering, which again, if the occasion calls for it, uh, just adds that touch of excitement. Now there is a right way to saber champagne and a wrong way. And by wrong, I mean that if you don't do it properly, it actually can be quite dangerous. So if you're sabering your first bottle of champagne, uh, make sure you pay attention to that section of this video. Whenever it comes to sabering champagne, there are a few important rules that need to be followed in order to do it safely. Uh, first and foremost, your bottle of champagne has to be thoroughly chilled. Uh, if it's not properly chilled, you can actually have the entire bottle of champagne itself explode, uh, which could actually cause uh, serious harm to you or someone else. The other mistake that people make when sabering champagne uh, is they'll put a bottle of champagne in an ice bucket with the neck of the champagne sticking out of the ice. The problem is, is that this doesn't chill the neck of the bottle. If the neck is not properly chilled also, uh, the entire bottle of champagne can explode whenever you're sabering it. So my recommendation uh, is that you chill the entire bottle of champagne in ice. Uh, if you don't have an area to lie down the entire bottle and submerge it in ice, my recommendation would be to put the bottle of champagne into the ice bucket upside down 15 to 20 minutes before you savor it to ensure that the neck of the bottle is properly chilled. It is the absolute most important thing that you can do to ensure that you don't hurt yourself or someone else when savoring a bottle of champagne. Next, when it comes time to savor your bottle of champagne, of course, the best way to do that is with a proper champagne saber. Uh, yes, they make them. Uh, this was lent to me by my good friend, uh, Alex Petrosin. As you can see, uh, this is from Rare Champagne. Uh, it may look like a knife, uh, but the blade is actually dull. You do not need a sharp blade in order to uh, savor a bottle of champagne. If anything, uh, you're probably going to ruin that edge. And so if you're using something like a kitchen knife, uh, I'd recommend turning it backwards and using the dull end of the knife itself to do the savoring. You can use almost anything to savor a bottle of champagne so long as it has a flat, strong edge. Uh, and I really do mean that. Uh, you could easily savor a bottle of champagne with a butter knife uh, like this. I've even done it with my cell phone. Let's talk about the proper or ordinary way to open a bottle of champagne. Uh, I've got this chilled bottle right here. Uh, it's been chilling in the refrigerator. Uh, first is of course, every bottle of champagne is going to have a foil uh, cover on the neck. Simply look for where that opens, which is... So simply look to see where that opens, right? Peel this off. And then because of the pressure uh, that is inside this bottle, all of the corks are tied off with a metal cap like this. So first remove that. Now, as long as your champagne is properly chilled, you don't have to really worry about the cork, you know, uncontrollably popping off. Uh, if that happens, it really is more of an indication that the champagne is at the improper temperature. Um, and then, you know, to open this normally, 
you know, you want to hold the bottle at a 45 degree angle. That's going to allow carbon dioxide inside the bottle to escape without shooting champagne across the room. And then just simply open this slowly. In that case, it kind of forced itself out, right? Uh, and as long as you're holding on to it, uh, you're able to uh, easily kind of hang on to this without having it shoot across the room. Now, if you're looking for dramatic effect, of course, you can pop the cork. Uh, as long as you've got the champagne bottle at a 45 degree angle, again, it should not, uh, you know, spew champagne all the way across the room. Uh, and there you go. Beautiful bottle of champagne. Simply take your champagne glass, hold that at an angle and pour slowly so that the bubbles don't overflow out of the glass. Now a champagne flute like this, you can easily fill it three quarters full, close to the top. It's not like a standard wine glass uh, where you wouldn't wanna fill it close to the top. So here you go, beautiful uh, champagne, cheers. So now that that's poured, Let's talk about sabering champagne. Okay, so now we have another bottle of champagne. Uh, this has been uh, chilling and uh, completely submerged in ice uh, and we're going to saber it. So the first thing with sabering is that you want to completely remove uh, this foil uh, covering uh, on the neck of the bottle of champagne. So I'm going to find that, open it up, okay. And then we're going to totally take this off. So next, uh, what you want to do is you want to locate the seam of the bottle. So every bottle of wine has a seam that runs the entire uh, distance of the bottle. Uh, you can feel it. Uh, it is, um, you know, it protrudes, right? It's a small bump. And that is right here. Okay, we're going to leave the metal uh, cap on this, right? Because whenever we savor this, right, we want the entire top of the bottle to uh, shear off of the bottle itself. So we're gonna leave that on there. It keeps this intact. Uh, now I do wanna, of course, caution you that you do wanna be careful. You are uh, having a broken piece of glass uh, fly off of the bottle. And so you wanna make sure that you're pointing this away from anyone you could possibly hit. Uh, or anything that you could damage. Uh, one time in college, uh, I was uh, popping the cork uh, off of a bottle of champagne uh, and the cork landed about two inches from the fire sprinkler. Uh, so you don't wanna set off the fire alarm, you know, sabering or popping the cork off of a bottle of champagne. Uh, you really do uh, want to be careful. So then I'm taking uh, my champagne saber right here and you're simply going to start from the bottom of the bottle and follow all the way through to the top. Uh, and what it should do is you know, build up the pressure in such a way that the top of the champagne bottle uh, completely shears off. There you go. So when sabering champagne, of course, a little bit of champagne is going to come out. Uh, let's let this settle down, but you can see, you know, the top of that bottle has been completely uh, sabered off of that. Now, as long as it's clean, it's safe to pour. Uh, and so there's no reason uh, you can't uh, take your glass of champagne and top off. So there we have it. Uh, this is a how to uh, properly, or as your mom might say, improperly open a bottle of champagne. Uh, but whenever it comes to a proper black tie event, uh, if the mood is right, uh, there is no better way to open a bottle of champagne. Uh, certainly no more impactful way to do it uh, than by sabering it. 
Now, if you haven't visited KirbyAllison.com, uh, please take a moment to do so. Of course, it's the best way to support the content that we film here on this channel. Uh, there you'll find the largest collection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care accessories in the world, as well as other great clothing accessories for the well-dressed, uh, like this sovereign grade bow tie wearing, this fil de bouche pocket square, uh, even these studs, silk socks, and so much more you can find online at KirbyAllison.com. Of course, I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Thanks for watching.